Hello everyone, welcome to the first video of chapter 6. In this chapter, we will study integer programming. So let's get started. Okay, so let's begin chapter 6.1. Here we will give a very brief introduction to integer programming. So first a definition. What is an integer programming? It is basically a linear programming problem and we add additional constraints on the variables. So the variables now are not only restricted, but they are also um, natural numbers, positive integers. They can be zero also. And the rest of the setting remains the same. There will be a objective function, there'll be a bunch of constraints, just as before. So we now go through an example. So we want to maximize this objective function, and then we have two constraints. And the new thing here is the variable x1, x2 are not only non-negative, but also integral meaning they're integers. So how do we um, solve such a problem? Let's get a visual understanding of the problem by using the graphing method that we have learned at the beginning of the course in chapter two. Since this problem has two variables, and x1 and x2, and we can plot the feasible region in the 2D plane, if you um, draw the boundary of the two constraints, you get this straight line and that straight line, and the inequality tells you that this shaded green area is the feasible area in the first quadrant. And uh, neglecting the integral restriction for the time being, if you solve that problem, then you can look at the um, objective function and then you see that the optimal point is obtained at this vertex that's in red. Okay, so at the same time in this graph, I also plot the grid like um, at 1, 2, 3, 4, all the integer positions, I draw a kind of underlying grid in x and in x1 and x2. And uh, the point where is a black dot, these are the points where the coordinate is integer. Like this one is 1, 1, and this will be 2, 1, this will be 3, 1, and so on and so forth. Okay, so then it's not difficult to see that the optimal value right here it does not land on an integer point. And in fact, if we do not require x1, x2 to be integral, then this optimal solution has the coordinate 9.2 and 2.4. So does that information help us to locate the optimal points, um, op optimal integral solution? So how would you suggest to probably to check? So one might be tempted to consider the four nearest points that are next to this uh, optimal solution in this grid. And then we see the four nearest one are these four, where is nine and two, and nine and three, that will be um, and nine and two, nine and three, and then 10, two, 10, three, that will be this point and that point. And we see from the graph that none of these are actually in the feasible region, they are all outside. So this hints to us that 
this problem is probably more complicated and we definitely need to design some new algorithm. So before we dive into the algorithm, let's look at the current status on the problem, on the way to solve it. So we'll have to say this actually is a very tricky problem. And there is not a best, most efficient algorithm that is universally accepted. Okay, so a quick overview for this chapter, we will present two popular methods. Um, the first one is called cutting plane algorithm, and the second one is called branch and band algorithm. Each, and this is chapter 6.3, and this is chapter 6.4. Okay, so um, if you want to have um, more examples, modeling examples that will end up in integer programming, um, you should read chapter 6.2. Just read a couple of examples there. Okay, so hope you like this. And uh, next time, in the next video, we'll dive into one of the algorithms. See you then.